Hey everybody, Josh DiTefano here, pianist, composer, writer, teacher, and I thought we'd do a few videos on improvising. So if we're going to talk about improvisation, playing a solo, we really need to understand what that actually means. So when you improvise, what are you doing? You are creating music in real time, instantaneous composition. This is not easy to do. I mean, you got to have everything firing at once. You need to have your brain and your fingers locked together. And this is not for piano players. This is for anybody, anybody that's playing, you know, whether you're playing the spoons or the accordion or the tenor or whatever you happen to have, if you're going to improvise, all these concepts will be the same. So if we know improvising is just creating music, let's talk about what makes music interesting. Number one, you want to have clear ideas that develop. Number two, you need to have confident rhythms. Number three, you need to have tension and release. And number four, you need to have sound and space. So those are all ideas are all pretty simple. You think, okay, shouldn't be a problem. You're on stage, somebody points to you and says, take it, and then, and you just start mashing the keys, smash, 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 and everything is wrong. Crash and burn, total and complete failure. You go home feeling dejected, start heavily drinking, your life spirals downhill. It's just the beginning of the end. Why does this happen? Why do we fail? Fear. They point to you, and you freeze, and you're thinking. Two, five, one, the five, oh, five, or should I play Lydian? Oh, maybe the dominant seven. Self-consciousness. What if I play a wrong note? They're all going to laugh at me. No clear ideas. So that's why we fail. There's so much going on. We're freezing. We're scared. What are people thinking about us? So how do you win? How do we be victorious? You have to be fearless. Adapt an attitude of no fear. You have to not think. You need to achieve this Zen state where you're just in the moment. The mind and the hand has to work, the hands have to work seamlessly together. And last but not least, we have to create a musical journey. Hold up just one second. I need to dispel a myth. There are no right notes and there are no wrong notes. Everything is just the strength and conviction of your ideas. If your ideas are strong, it's all going to be some version of how tense the note is or how much of a release it is. So how do we do conviction? You create and you develop an idea. You play with good time. Good time is sort of the key. You play things that are rhythmically accurate and solid, they're going to sound great. Tension and release. Tension and release. There are no wrong notes, there's no right notes. There's only tension and release. And then, of course, sound and space. Lots of notes, no notes. All right, so now that we have the basic concepts of what to do and what not to do, let's put those ideas into a, a context. We're going to work with the minor blues sound today. You might be thinking, oh, you mean the minor blues scale? I believe that's a pentatonic. And I'm going to say no. That's not what I mean. We're not going to play scales. We're not, we're not doing scales. Scales are exercises. Scales are not music. We are creating a sonic world, an environment, this minor blues environment that we are handing to our audience. It has a sound. It is the sound of Chicago. It is the sound of rock. It is the sound of the blues. It is the most popular sound, arguably, at least for the last 60 years, I'd say. The minor blues sound is just one, flat three, four, sharp four, five, flat seven, and back to one. So you give yourself a drone. 
we're in C here, so this is, I'm just going to do C octaves with the left hand. And I'm just going to play the notes of this sound, just sort of noodle around, seeing if what I can come up with. But really, I'm trying to drill into my brain what these things sound like. The relationships to each other, the relationship to the tonic uh, chord. So... Each note has a different sound. The root sounds like C. That flat third is a different sound. The fourth, that, that sounds very different than this. The only way you can identify those sounds with those pitches is by sitting down and playing it with a drone, play it with a backing track, play it with the blues, play it with some rock tune, find some basic uh, hard bop tune. There's millions of things for you to choose from. But you want, you want something that ch doesn't change tonality. You don't want a tune that shifts keys. You don't want to try to play this with the giant steps. It's going to miss the point. You want something where the, the harmony is more or less static, where you're going to be in the sound uh, of this, this minor blues sound the whole way. So like a, 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 if you're in C, you could say, oh, C blues, you know, that's going to work well. Or, or like uh, the Mr. Magic Vamp, C uh, minor 7 to F7. That's static. You can do that whole vamp and just... That's all within this minor blues sound. And you need to establish the link from your fingers to your head so that you know, if I want to hear this... I know this is the flat seven. So, so establishing the sound of the notes in your in your mind, so you can break down the barrier from your brain to your hands, because we want it to be seamless, one organism. But we're here to learn how to play solos. So what do you do? You create motifs. This is probably the most important thing is you create an idea. It doesn't have to be long, it could be very short. You're looking for like a two, three, four note at the most motif. Real simple. Something real easy. And you start to develop it. I'm glad you asked because we're going to talk about it. Okay, so now we're going to do the motif and variations. We're going to take a very basic motif, which is one and two eighth notes. Uh, the flat seven to the one, and we're going to talk about all the different things you can do with that motif. So I got a little backing track here, so we can hear it in context. So we start with the basic idea. Now we'll displace the rhythm, where we're going to start it from a different place in the bar. Now we're going to shorten the entire rhythm. So now we'll do the opposite of that. We're going to extend the rhythm. Okay, now we're going to practice inverting the pitches. Now we'll, we'll transpose the entire thing somewhere else. Keeping within this minor blue sound. Now we're going to partially alter some of the pitches. Now we're going to add an additional note in the beginning of the phrase. Now I'll add a pitch after the phrase. And so now we'll reduce the number of overall pitches. So that's, that's a lot of mileage you can get out of just this one simple idea. And of course you can do all sorts of combinations of these, whatever this is, like uh, 8, 9, 10 different ways of of tweaking your initial idea. So you can see from one very short idea, you can get a lot 
of mileage, all developing that one little way with little tweaks and, and uh, twists and adjustments here and there, you can get a lot of mileage out of this. But for this to work, you have to leave space. You play your idea, you wait a bar. You play another idea, slight variation, you wait another bar. Let the space, because if everything just runs on together, it doesn't really sound like music, it sounds like we're running a marathon and it's this constant stream of sound, and what are we doing? Oh, he's playing these notes, those notes, that's the same idea, oh, I don't know what's going on here. Space, make a statement, let it breathe. You say your piece, you shut your hole. You say your piece, silence. Make it a statement, make it count. So that should be enough to uh, keep you busy for, for the next week or so. So when you're going forward, think about learning this minor blues sound, getting imprinted into your brain, focus on crafting your idea and developing in some of the ways we talked about, focus on leaving space, and, and, this, and then remember um, it's all about tension and release, no wrong notes. I'll see you soon with the next video talking about what to do next. If you like what we're doing here, please think about subscribing. Give me a like, leave me a comment, and I'll see you next time.